But today is a special, special day. And uh, the Montfort Port Marines uh, and, and their um, place is being, uh, is having a problem and we are so, so great to be able to help them. The Montfort Port Marines Association, Chicago chapter, Members, I think many of you have heard they are having a real problem uh, keeping that wonderful establishment they have had there for I don't know how long. And so we have a, a special group here today to talk about that because it is so deserving. So um, the members are here um, in the studio. Sharon Stokes Perry is a native of Chicago and enlisted in the Marine Corps in 1985 and served 10 years. She was stationed at Camp Pendleton, Camp Smith, Hawaii, Chicago Military Entrance Processing Center, the 2nd Battalion, 24th Marines. She joined the Montfort Point Marine Association in 2007 and was elected treasurer in 2008. She was elected president of the Montfort Point Marine Association Chicago chapter in 2010 and currently remains in that position. She is an advocate for veterans and their families. She holds a Master of Science degree in adult education and a Bachelor of Science degree in organization behavior from Northwestern University. Madam President, it's great to see you here. Good to see you too. Thank you, thank you so much. Appreciate you being here. Uh, secondly, um, we are pleased to have the um, financial secretary who's on uh, the phone uh, he is Mr. James Reynolds, Jr. He was born in Tennessee and moved to Chicago at seven years old. He was drafted into the Marines and enlisted in Chicago and Illinois. He served during World War II from 1943 to 46 as a clerk on Camp Monfort Point, North Carolina. He also served in Korea from 50 to 51 in the Army and obtained the rank of Staff Sergeant. He saw combat in Korea. He received three Bronze Stars, the Korean Service Medal, National Defense and Good Conduct Medal. He also received a Presidential Unit Citation and Marksman's Badge. He has been a member of the MPMA for 30 years and has served as the Financial Secretary, Housing and Financial Committees. He retired from the Chicago Painters and Decorators Union. Uh, Mr. James Reynolds, thank you so much for being with us on the phone, all right? Yes, you're quite welcome. Thank, um, thank you so much, sir. Also, we have Mr. Paul Knox. Junior, Paul Knox was a native of Chicago and graduated from De La Salle High School. He joined the Marine Corps in 1964 and was stationed at Marine Corps Air Station Santa Ana. He served in Vietnam from 66, 1966 to 67. He was then stationed at Marine Corps Recruiting Depot in Paris Island and was honorably discharged in 1968. He joined Montfort Point, Chicago in 2010 and was elected to the vice president in 2012. He is a member of the Housing Financial Committee and the chairperson of the membership committee. He retired from Nestle Corporation after 45 years and was very active, and is very active, I should say, in the community. Mr. Knox, great to see you here in the studio. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I love your outfit. You're looking great. Thank you. <laughs> You're looking great. And also, we are pleased to have um, the, uh, well, we're going to talk about the GoFundMe campaign in a moment, but there's another gentleman that I certainly want to uh, mention being here because he is just uh, not only doing a great job, but he's a good friend of mine, and uh, he is a member of the city council. He is uh, Alderman Roderick T. Sawyer, who is the alderman of the 6th Ward of the city of Chicago, the son of, of course, the late Chicago mayor, the second black mayor in the city. And uh, he was first elected in 2011 after narrowly defeating the incumbent and is currently serving his second term. <coughs> he has two children. Uh, the alderman grew up in the Sixth Ward on the south side of Chicago. He is an alumnus of Ignatius, St. Ignatius College, uh, also earned a Bachelor of Science of Finance from DePaul and a Juris Doctor from the Chicago Kent College of Law. Counselor, how are you? Doing well, Cliff. How good. are you? Great to see Always you again. Always good seeing you. Always and you a too. And you too. We have uh, the consulate here, the alderman, because of the fact that um, <clears throat> the place we're talking about is mm -hmm. in the sixth ward, and uh, he is trying to help out, and we just appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So, Madam President, why don't you start off and tell us, uh, uh, for people who may not know, what 
what the situation is? Uh, well, I think it uh, would be uh, great to let everyone know what the Monfort Point Marine story is. Great. Mm -hmm. And the uh, Monfort Point Marines are the first African American Marines to ever serve in the Marine Corps. And they served at a segregated boot camp from 1942 to 1949, located at Camp Lejeune, uh, North Carolina. And it was a time in the Marine Corps where um, they didn't allow uh, blacks and whites to train together. So they created a segregated boot camp, which was named Camp Monfort Point, on which they get their name. So um, according to President Truman, when he segregated the services for all time in 1948. Desegregated. Um, yeah, desegregated, desegregated. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Desegregated the um, armed forces mm -hmm. for, since 1948. Mm -hmm. That camp was closed down in 1949. Mm -hmm. And these men were forgotten. They went on back to their lives. Some of them continued careers in the Marine Corps, serving in uh, World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. Mm -hmm. Others went home to create other lives for themselves, and the group decided in 1965 to have a reunion, and that's when they created their association, and that was in Philadelphia, which is the home of the Marine Corps. So, uh, Chapter 1 was created in Philadelphia in 1965, and the Chicago chapter has been here since 1966. Uh, they had their first home on East 75th Street, and they had that home from 1970 to 1983. Now, as we speak of our current location, we've been there 35 years since 1983. And during uh, this time of occupation at this location, um, they have been mostly involved with uh, creating a place to honor their contributions to America. Uh, also, creating a place where returning Vietnam veterans could feel at home. Mm -hmm. uh, because we all know the history of the Vietnam veterans. They didn't receive any ticket tape parades right. when it was time to come home. So right. our association, understanding <clears throat> the undervalue of their service, created a place for them. And for many years, they held the PFC James Anderson uh, Banquet, which honors the first African American to receive a Medal of Honor during Vietnam. So uh, the association has a long history of community service and giving back to their community and giving back to their vets. We boasted a membership of over 200 at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, now our membership has dwindled to 35. And when that membership was great, they were self-sufficient. They took care of themselves as military people tend to do. They take care of their own, and they did. Mm -hmm. They um, accomplished that. But uh, when we talk about our heroes, who the youngest of them may be 90 and the oldest of them, you know, is going up in age. In our particular chapter, our oldest uh, World War II veteran is 97 years old, and wow. he's still makes appearances, as we mm -hmm. call it, mm -hmm. and comes by and gives us his words of wisdom and encouragement. And it's a facility where these gentlemen can get together, talk about the good old days, <laughs> but also educate us about their history and why it's important that we keep and continue to preserve it. Great uh, statement, Madam President, a good explanation. And of course, I've known about it for a long time because uh, the place there that uh, used to be open for other things, you know, for uh, you'd have different clubs to come out and they could, they could use the facility at all. And uh, it's, it's like it's been there forever, <laughs> you know? Absolutely. So, yeah, it's done, that's such a great, uh, a great job. I tell you, um, thank you, uh, Madam President. Um, Mr. Uh, Reynolds, uh, on the, he's on the phone. Would you like to to add anything? Well, I I concur with what the what the president stated. Mm -hmm. uh, the place is actually a place for all vets to meet mm -hmm. and network with each other. Uh, a lot of the younger vets 
don't even remember the times that we went through because I happen to have served in two segregated units, the U.S. Marine and the U.S. Army. So I've been segregated twice. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, and, wow. and rarely you will find someone who has served in two segregated units. That's right. That's not, right. not only different units, you know, mm-hmm. the Marine Corps and the Army, but uh, we do a lot there to help the neighbors, the neighborhood, and other vets with their problems that they may have if we can't address them. We know someone who can. Mm -hmm. So that's been the main uh, place to meet and talk about these things. What unit did you you serve in in the Army? U.S. Army 2nd Division, 503rd Field Artillery. Okay. Matter matter of fact, one of the members you might know is Charles Rangel. We served together. Oh, absolutely. Charles Rangel, certainly. Yes, yes. So, yeah, we were in the same unit. Wow. So you yeah. really did luck out. You got segregated twice. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, <laughs> Not, that is really something, Mr. Russell. Well, actually, actually, I was segregated three times. Because not only was I in a segregated Marine Corps and a segregated Army, but I served in an Army that didn't care too much for Marines. Wow. So I had to adapt <laughs> <laughs> in oh, combat. I, I got you. I got you. Let me remind everybody, you can call us, 773-591-1690. We'd be happy to hear from you. If anybody has a comment or statement they want to make, we'd be happy to hear it, 773-591-1690. Uh, Mr. Paul Knox, Jr. is here in the studio with us. Tell us what you'd like to say about this. Well, commenting on uh, Mr. Reynolds to hear the true stories really made me proud because like they say when we were in they didn't teach you anything about the Moffat Point Marines. They didn't start teaching until about six years ago. Mm. So you imagine all those years and nobody knew about it. But one thing about the building is I've like been to lounges and you can hear people whispering about the Vietnam vets, how bad we were and what we didn't do. This place is a home where you don't have to worry about that. All vets come to it, we have women vets, and we just take care of each other. You can get information that you need, we help out with the VA. So it's, it's, it's something else. It's, it's to hear their stories. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, it's, that's great. It's really something else. That is great. Now uh, we go back to Madam President, or whoever wants to respond. Uh, the major problem you're having right now, of course, is the facility itself. Who wants to uh, talk about that? Because this is a serious problem. Where I can jump in there, Um, Madam President. We Mm -hmm. are having some financial difficulties, and a lot of those financial difficulties are the uh, same issues that are happening in the veterans' organization across the nation. Uh, Being able to attract the younger membership, uh, when you talk about the average age of our membership at Chicago, we're talking about an age that's up there around 80 years old Mm -hmm. as our average age. So. Um, we're struggling to attract younger veterans to help uh, carry mm-hmm. out the mission of educating the public about the legacy of the Montford Point Marines. Uh, but also, in that same sense, there is not the financial assistance uh, that we've needed uh, in the past or that we've had sure. in the past. Mm-hmm. And with the uh, halls being uh, inoperable in our facility also mm-hmm. uh, because of a need for a new roof and some new uh, renovations to the facility. We've had a drastic loss in income. Sure, because you, had, you used to have people that I was just coming in. They would, you, they would come in and rent the place because to come in and have different e- events and so forth, right? Yes, yeah. our membership mm-hmm. uh, has mm-hmm. always supported 
uh, the facility by having their families and their sure. friends uh, come in and mm -hmm. have retirement parties, I've have been there weddings, yeah, right, I've been there. have Christmas parties, so, and those things that would generate income. So the building itself, Madam President, is in disrepair. What's what's the current situation with that? Um, basically, we're we're in need of a roof. We're in need of a heating system. Um, we're in need into some general. Uh, makeup on <laughs> on the place, you know, is mm -hmm. if you've been to a lot of these Chicago institutions, the uh, interior hasn't changed in 20 or 30 years. So uh, that's not just our issue, but that's a lot of issues with the uh, old school Chicago institutions. But, mm -hmm. you know, our primary goal is this is where we generate our community service activities. Yeah. And this is where we get our biggest uh, thrill and pride in being able to assist our community and being mm -hmm. able to uh, go down to Jesse Brown VA and host a uh, <clears throat> bingo for the sick and shut-in veterans mm -hmm. and being able to deliver toys for tots and Christmas baskets to sick and shut-in uh, veterans and community partners designated by the Department of Human Services. Um, mm -hmm. Well, are you able? To, are you able to do that now, or in, in other words, is is the building is it still open? Is it operating? Yes, the building is still open and okay. operating. And uh, even though we know we are having our financial um, situations, you know, we decided that we were going to continue with our program. Mm -hmm. We delivered fifty Christmas baskets this right. year to sick and shut-in veterans. And, you know, that's part of our mission. Our mission is to continue to do those things which bring honor uh, to our membership. Is the city, has, has, I'm, I'm sure the city inspectors have been out, is that right? Yes, the city yeah. inspectors and have they are, been And out. they are telling you what? Well, we've been cited for uh, building violations. Mm -hmm. That's a matter of pu public knowledge, and mm -hmm. we're addressing those violations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, cited for building violation. And that's one of the reasons we are so pleased to have the alderman here with us. Uh, he, we just are so pleased that he came in because obviously when you're talking about uh, building violations and so forth, and uh, the uh, alderman certainly knows about that. And uh, alderman, you've been, uh, you we only have a couple of minutes before we go to a break, but mm -hmm. we'll just start off by saying you've been assisting uh, <clears throat> thank you, Cliff. Mm -hmm. We've been meeting, uh, and we're having some very productive meetings. We're going to try to get to the crux of the problems mm -hmm. and help resolve them. I mean, mm -hmm. we, this is what we're going to do. We're, I, I'm, I'm confident that we're going to do this with your help and others' help, Absolutely. obviously, but we're going to get this together, and we're going to work it out. That's great to hear. And I'll, okay. I'll talk, I guess we'll talk about it on the other side. Yeah, yeah, we'll come back and have, have you discuss it then. We're just pl pleased to have the alderman here. Again, uh, America's Heroes Group, a little different than usual, not our usual panel, uh, but this is so important that we certainly had to talk about this, the Montfort Port Marines uh, situation, and uh, there are so many of us that want to do whatever we can, and we're just pleased to have uh, in our studio the President, Sharon Stokes Perry, uh, Mr. James Reynolds, Jr. is a uh, call in. He's on the phone. Uh, Paul Knox is uh, Jr. is in the studio, and as, as I mentioned, the counselor, uh, Alderman uh, Roderick Sawyer is also here, and he's going to be helping. And again, before we take the break, uh, if somebody has a comment or question, you know how to do it, 773-591-1690. Stay with us. We'll be back. <laughs> And we are back. This is, of course, America's Heroes Group. I'm Cliff Kelly, uh, and uh, so pleased to be, of course, the um, person sitting here talking. <laughs> we were laughing. All the folks around the table listening to that great music. Anyway, America's Heroes Group, and uh, we are doing something special today. It's not our usual show, for those of you who may not have gotten that that news, we are doing something that is very special for the Montford Point Marines and that building that they have. 
And uh, we're going to talk about one thing with President uh, before, and then we're going to go uh, to the alderman who is going to really give us some great information. But uh, President um, Stokes Perry, tell us about the GoFundMe page. Yes, Cliff, we have set up a GoFundMe page, and it has been successful, but we have not yet reached our goal. We mm -hmm. have a goal of $200,000 mm -hmm. with uh, $75,000 of that goal going toward to paying the uh, delinquent property taxes, and uh, in addition, another $125 to help with the restoration uh, of the building. Uh, so if you go to GoFundMe and you type in Save Monfort Point, uh, our site will pop up and you can make your donation. And we're really asking that uh, help from our community, our veteran community, our community of individuals who may support a veteran, uh, who know a veteran, to uh, go to that page and uh, type in Save Monfort Point and donate. Okay, I want you to give that once more. What did they type in, Madam President? They're going to go to the GoFundMe mm -hmm. uh, site, mm -hmm. type in Save Monfort Point, and they will be able to make their donation. Good. That sounds good. Save my now, one thing we want to add all to also uh, is the fact that although this is Monfort Point Marines, the installation and what you do is for all veterans. Yes, yes. We need Cliff. to make that sure because a lot of people, well, I mean, I'm in the Army. I, I think that uh, uh, Mr. Knox, didn't somebody ask you the same thing? If, if, they, if you all will accommodate uh, Army and so forth? Yes. Yeah. I've had like two or three people recently mm -hmm. ask me that question. Yeah, okay. So it's everybody, anybody who's a veteran. Okay. Absolutely. That, that's that's very important. Okay. And we are looking for a few great veterans to come out and help us. That's great. And that includes women too. Oh yeah, you got some of the best women. Yeah, that's right. Some of the best vets are women. That's that's. We just had a little discussion about that. <laughs> Mr. Reynolds, we don't want to close. You just break in and tell us what you want. What's going on? You, you want to say something? Well. Mm -hmm. At my age, I'm 91. I got wow. time to listen to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, one funny. thing, one one <laughs> thing you forgot to mention is uh -huh. we waited 69 years to be recognized. Yeah, and we finally was able to be recognized and received the Congressional Gold Medal in 2012. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that's so. That's that's very uh, that's very important. You got that right. That's that's very important. Before we go to the alderman, I'm going to take a call. Seven seven three five nine one sixteen ninety is the number. Uh, Nelson's calling. Hey Nelson, thank you for calling in. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. No. This is Nelson. Nelson. Oh, what's what's the name? Nelson. Nelson. Oh. Taylor. oh, oh. Oh, Milton. I'm sorry. That's yes, a screen. Yes. Okay, Milton. I'm not oh, uh, uh, your friend that lives down the street from you on 57 Indiana. Gotcha, Milton. You know? Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah. But I got a son that, that's in the reconstruction. You know, he's in the rehabbing. Okay. I just called him and told him about the, build, the building over there, you know. Mm hmm And uh, I, I, I'm going to try to send him over there, you know, to, to, to help you, help, help you all out, you know. You know that would be great. Now, Milton, if you you know this person, right? Yeah, this is my son. It's my oh, son. your son? Yeah, I guess you do know him. I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's in the. And he does good work. Okay. And he's in the rehab, and he's in the rehab and business. And um, wow. I'm, I'm, well, listen, well, let's let's take care of that right now. Why don't you give? Would you give your son's number to Madam President, and she can make sure that they talk? Yes. Uh, yes, yes. Give, give, give the number. It's uh, 773 329 okay. His name is Brian Montgomery. Brian Montgomery. Okay, that is great. And she can tell him that, uh, that Milton said to call. All yes, right. yes. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Because uh, I just called her. I just called him and told him about it. Okay. And he said he's going to try to get over there so she can call him and they can get together right away. That is great, Milton. 
Yes. Listen, uh, I, I'm a veteran too in my house. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm a veteran of Vietnam. I was over there in '68 and '69. You too. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. All yeah. Right. Okay. Thank. Thanks so much. That is wonderful. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Boy, that that is that 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 is just as good as the GoFundMe page. You say, call him now. That's great, uh, Alderman. So yeah. tell us what. Uh, can be well, done. Well, yeah. Actually, that was a very appropriate call that came in because it one certainly of the things, was. Yeah, uh, it was uh, when we we've been talking and we break, we're trying to break it down into two issues. One is the more immediate issue, which is the rede redemption of the taxes. Yeah, I'm um, glad you mentioned that. Yeah, the redemption of the taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, being a lawyer, when they brought that to me first, mm -hmm. uh, I reached out to people that I know that are professionals in the industry. Sure that know a little bit more about redemption, then there, there are always alternate ways to do things. You right. know, it's not always just pay the money and that's it. Yeah, right. So I, I, I talked to a, a friend and former client of mine. He doesn't like to be acknowledged, but mm -hmm. he's been very helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, we were on the phone with him last week, and he was telling me about different ways that we can approach this. He knows the buyer of the taxes already. Great. He wants to set up meetings, and he thinks there's a way that we can do this probably less, maybe less than the 75000 that we would have to outlay. Great. So that's Great. the first thing. We're going to work that out. Great. Uh, we're going to meet again next week to uh, talk about a plan and talk about how much it's going to cost. And we mm -hmm. still need to raise money, so we need mm -hmm. people to go to the GoFundMe page and mm -hmm. make donations. Uh, I've secured one, uh, another anonymous donation for $5,000 from someone Great. that we all know, but we, uh, the person okay. chose not to be named. Sure. And also, I'm going to try to put my little pennies together and give $1,000, and I'm Beautiful. hoping others would do the same. Beautiful. But, again, that's the first part is the taxes. The second part, obviously, is the reconstruction. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that the gentleman called with the help. Isn't that what, great? That yeah. was wonderful. Yeah. And I was hoping that we can get others, because I was going to reach out to others, mm -hmm. uh, including the sponsor of this show, mm -hmm. Mr. Mm -hmm. Higginbottom, which I know he would yeah. love to be helpful, sure. and has a construction company. Yes. Uh, and other African-American-owned construction point. companies right. to see if I mm -hmm. can get a coordinated effort for us to help Montford Point mm -hmm. so that they won't be able to spend as much money because, and we really want them to be self-sustaining once again. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's a beautiful location. It just needs a little uh, little repair work, a little mm -hmm. TLC. Mm -hmm. And so that they, we can resume having events there, resume uh, people coming there to congregate and have a good time and spend money, which is, helps them be self-sustaining. Sure. So and it's fun. And yeah, and it's, it's a fun it's a place. I've been there many a yeah. time and yeah. had a great time. Yeah. Yeah. And it's always cool talking to veterans and mm -hmm. talking about, you know, hearing stories. Uh, and I forgot to say this at the beginning because I appreciate all of you all for your service because you all have served. Uh, and and I, we can't say that enough about this. So it's very important. And it's very important for us, particularly those that haven't served, who want to do their part to assist those who uh, who gave their lives for the country. So. I want to try to find a way yeah. to, to really help and dive into this. So this has been a, become a cause for me that I'm going to work on, and we're going to make sure that us and all of us together mm -hmm, that we mm -hmm. can get this done. Alderman, that's great. That, that's wonderful. I knew I didn't have any doubt that you would be trying to work out something for it. Is there, um, uh, Alderman Sawyer, is, what, what, what is that a lot of people don't know? And, you know, things change. I was a member of the city council, as you know, but, it's, yeah, that was back when the earth was cooling. So <laughs> the Neighborhood Opportunity Fund. Is, uh, well, it's a grand opportunity that uh, based on, on uh, monies we've received based on uh, people buying density, if, if okay. you know what I mean. Yeah, sure. On zoning issues. And, mm -hmm. and there's a pot of money there that's become available, uh, and we use it to help businesses in south and west side communities uh existing businesses startup businesses uh it's become quite a large pot of money and and that's uh i know there's been some applications made we're going to try to find out where that is okay uh with Montford point and see if we can provide mm -hmm. any assistance with that okay that's just one avenue but again sure we don't want people to think to be relieved of the obligation right. to all, donate need, money exactly please exactly. donate money to Montford point exactly exactly go to the site yeah. Come drop off a mm -hmm. check. Do whatever you can to support this great organization. Yeah, yeah. No, that's absolutely correct. Let's go to uh, Stan. Hi, Stan. You're on WVON. Stan? Yeah, yeah. Hi. I'm sorry. How you doing, Stan? That's okay. Stan? I'm fine, Stan. Thanks for calling. Great, mm -hmm. great. And all the men, Madam President, I'm so happy that I was able to tune in to your station today. Mm -hmm. I heard you talking about it some time back, and I'm glad you brought it back up to the front. 
Uh, I have a cousin that lives up in Detroit, Michigan. He was the recipient of that Medal of Honor that was given to the Mumford Point Marines. And oh, wow. I had a chance to Great. take a look at it. He's way up there in numbers. He's just as vivid in his imagination about how that whole operation was going. And uh, the pictures that I saw of the crew, I say, boy, that is incredible. And he is really happy to have served in that uh, segregated situation. I have heard the, uh, I wanted to know the address so that we could uh. drop by. And the uh, previous caller did make a mention about maybe someone can come in and volunteer to do services down there. And I'm so glad you have a GoFundMe page. I'm definitely going to get on that. And as far as my cousin is concerned, I'm going to let him know what's going on uh, with this chapter here in Chicago. Uh, and he, he was really, like I say, I'm a, I'm a vet as well. But when mm-hmm. I sit and I talk with him, I go, get out of here. <laughs> so I, I know they experience sometimes being set apart. And it's amazing. That barrier is still tall, and we just have to keep on fighting until we tear it down. We certainly yeah. do, Stan, and that's a great comment, and I want to thank you so much. And one thing you, you brought up, what's the address? I don't think we've ever mentioned that since we've been talking. Uh, yes, thank mm-hmm. you, Stan, and thank you for your support. Uh, the address to the facility is 7011 South Vincennes, V-I-N-C-E-N-N-E-S, that's Chicago, Illinois, 60621. Mm-hmm. And that is if you want to make a direct mail mm-hmm. contribution. You can also call us at 773-873-7111. Uh, to call about uh, more information regarding the facility and mm-hmm. also to uh, make other donations or arrange to have me pick up donations because I pick up donations too. <laughs> I would, I would too. So I could just come by the facility and just leave a check if I like? Yes, sir. You can put a check in the mailbox. Okay. okay. All righty. I so sure much. do appreciate that. And thank you very much for all your help in this matter. Stan, thank you thank so you. much. Appreciate you bringing that up. That's great. Yep. Okay, bye. That is wonderful. <clears throat> yeah, that's a lot of people, I'm sure, because as the Olderman mentioned, uh, there, there, are, there are so many of us that uh, remember the place, you know, yes, uh, and uh, it, it's just a shame that it's gotten to this point. But, a, a lot, you know, <clears throat> and it's not just, uh, and the Olderman certainly knows this as I do, and all of us, it's not, this has special meaning yeah. because there are so many businesses in our community because we haven't supported them, mm-hmm. don't exist anymore. You know what I mean? That's correct. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But they don't have the meaning behind them. It's, you know, it's, 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 it's a different, right. It's a whole different issue. Mm-hmm. So uh, that, that makes a big difference. I remember we used to have fun on 71st Street. That's right. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> You didn't think we I'd forgotten that, did no, you? No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we had church service there. Did they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, if anybody else wants to call in, please do so, 773-591-1690. This is so, so, so important. Mr. Reynolds, I just w- want to make sure we don't leave you out because, you know, you have so much to say, but you're not here in the studio. Did you have anything else you wanted to mention to us? Mr. Reynolds, can you hear us? I hope we didn't. Oh, no, I, he, okay, I see he's back on the screen. Mr. Reynolds? Huh, okay. I hope we'll get him back. Hello. Okay, there you are. Okay, I, w- I was trying to reach you because, you know, I don't want to uh, think that you are less important simply because you're not in the studio. Uh, I didn't, you know, we've got a good conversation going here. I just wanted to make sure. Was there anything else that you wanted to mention to us? Yeah. Uh, I truly uh, appreciate the support that we're getting, and we need to see these these things happen before we lose everything, uh, before yeah. we all pass away. Yeah. Old Marine. So we're trying to 
smooth as possible. Okay. So I want to thank everyone that's participating and helping us out. Uh, he's done a lot of great things, and I think he's going to do a lot more, and I want to give And without our president, we wouldn't be this far. So thank you so much. Okay. I want to thank you, Mr. Reynolds. And when we say our president, we're talking about Sharon Stokes Perry. I just want to make sure everybody knows. <laughs> <laughs> it's, That's it's, right. It's not our commander in chief. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you folks understood where I was going with that. Uh, this has been. This has really been some great uh, information. Uh, uh, Mr. Knox, same thing to you. I mean, this is a, 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 a great thing that uh, I'm sure you have a lot of memories. Do you talk to a lot of the people you served with? Not that I, uh, not that I served with, but mm -hmm. I, I'm so interested in the history. To get to talk to these, these first Marines, mm -hmm. it's, it's unbelievable. It, it, to hear the real story. Because it's not in history books, which it should be, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. Should be absolutely. And the uh, only thing I'm glad is they did make changes, and they do teach the Marines coming in now about the Moffat Point history. Yeah, which is a, which is a good thing, uh, a very good thing. Uh, you know, Madam President, we we certainly did well with the Tuskegee Airmen and the history and so forth. Uh, why do you think that uh, this is the same type of story? Why do you think that uh, it hasn't been, it's been recognized relative to the, the medals and all, without a doubt, but n not the continuous mentioning of it in, in history. Wh why do you think there's a difference? There shouldn't be. Um, I'm, you know what, I'm not sure why there's mm -hmm. a difference, and this would be not to take anything away from the Tuskegee Airmen oh, no, because they are a great mm -hmm. uh, part of our military history. Sure. And I believe there's some four or 500 of them. Uh, but you're talking about 20,000 African-American Marines who served during World War II, who served on Guam, Saipan, Iwo Jima, oh, yeah. Marianas, Marshall Islands, Intaniwak. And um, I don't know why the recognition isn't there, and I believe part of it is because it was never introduced in the Marine Corps formally until uh, General Amos made it mandatory yeah. reading mm -hmm. from private to general. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, leadership starts at the top, and if the top yeah. uh, decides to make it recognizable, then it becomes recognizable. And I think a lot of the work that we, groundwork that we did, uh, with the Black Caucus to um, mm -hmm. ensure that they were recognized. You know, we sent that bill up to Congress time and time again, mm -hmm. and it never garnered enough votes. So as Mr. Reynolds said, 69 years later, it finally got the right amount of votes, and that 112th Congress mm -hmm. passed that and made them gold, congressional gold medal recipients. So uh, it's a story worth knowing. Uh, it's a story that most people don't know because everyone is familiar with the Tuskegee Airmen. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I was familiar with the Tuskegee Airmen, and I was a Marine and didn't know the history of my own service. So, uh, you know, I welcome uh, letting that knowledge be out. I welcome educating the public about the Montfort Point Marines and their successes. Uh, I want the community to go to that GoFundMe page mm -hmm. and put in Save Mom for Point and make their donations or to call 773-873-660 so they can find the address to make uh, their donations. And uh, first and foremost, as anyone that's African American and has served uh, their country, uh, one of the things that the first. Everyone has to be a first. Someone has to be the first. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the times they fought for the right to fight. They had mm -hmm. to fight for the right to fight. Yeah. And often they weren't treated as well as our German prisoners no. at the time. So right. um, their perseverance is testimony mm -hmm. to the strength 
of their service, mm -hmm. to the dedication mm -hmm. of their service. Mm -hmm. And uh, as an organization that embraces all branches of the service, uh, we salute them. They are heroes, and we stand on their shoulders. You know, t t talking about, j just mention some of those names you mentioned, Madam President, where they fought in the Pacific. Some uh, of those, I, I'm, I'm a military historian. Yes. I, I like talking, and the, 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 the war I'm most famous in talking about is the Civil War, because it tells you a lot. Yeah. But, but, this, uh, <laughs> but just mention, you mentioned some of those. Those were horrific battles. Yes, and uh, they fought. They have fought in almost every battle uh, Yo, my God. in World War yeah. II, mm -hmm. even though they were non-combatants. Yes. You yes. know, they were supposed to be individuals to take supplies right. to the real troops. Yeah, that was but the Red Ball Express. I was about that to say, anybody know anything yeah. about combat? Mm -hmm. uh, That's true. Let's take another call up before we run out of time. Colonel Jeffries is on. Hi, you're on WVON 1690. Hi, Clifford, to your guests. It's Hi. retired now. And uh, I just want to support them, even though they're Marines. Go Army. <laughs> <laughs> Truly. And thank you, Cliff, for bringing this because we have other established organizations, and they always don't mean us well, you know, because racism is truly wearing this ugly head. So I uh, think right. in a few. Yes, mm -hmm. I sent in a few coins, and I'm looking Beautiful. to get some more. And Beautiful. we need to keep this going Beautiful. as I transition to uh, become a. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm a uh, ROTC instructor at a uh, high park, and I'm looking to oh, do great. more things. I didn't know that. You, yeah, I didn't oh, know yeah. that. Yeah, I'll mm -hmm. talk to you about that, Cliff. But do do no. so, do so, do so, do so. Okay, and you all have a great and day. You and you too, Colonel. And thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you all. Colonel. Great. I want to thank all of our callers, our listeners, and, of course, our guests, and uh, certainly our team. Regarding here. any questions or concerns? Regarding mm -hmm. any questions or concerns about affordable housing, social services, wellness care, please feel free to call America's Heroes Group at 312-803-2618. We're located at 155 North Wacker Drive, Suite 4250. Thank you for watching us live on Facebook. Make sure you hit the Facebook like button at the top of our Facebook page. Therefore, you stay connected and you will receive future notifications regarding future shows, events, and information regarding veterans, armed forces, and their family members and the community. We'd like to thank our partner, Ms. Dorothy Lavelle. You can read the Chicago Reader articles on veterans, armed forces, and their family members online at www.chicagocrusader.com to, su to subscribe to the Chicago Crusaders weekly column Voices with Cliff Kelly and America's Heroes Group call Chicago Crusader at 773-752-2500 or send an email to at ads at chicagocrusaders.com to request a subscription and I apologize for my voice I'm struggling with a cold <laughs> <laughs> alright thank, thank you so much that of course is our executive producer uh, and uh, we want to thank all of our callers and uh, and of course our guest here and uh, the alderman and thank you to our technical producer Tierra Randall. Miss Randall thank you so much great job thanks everybody and uh, we are told that um, tomorrow's temperature is going to be 65 and sunny <laughs> in, in Miami. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Have a